Sorry, we're closed. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. Episode 102. And if you're watching on YouTube, you see the storm that is brewing above New York City right now in the background. Uh, we got a, some not so great weather here in the tri state area for Fourth of July weekend. Uh, but as far as a business owner who operates in Hoboken, which is typically slower in this in the summer months, typically bad weather means people stay in Hoboken, which uh, is always good for business. So there is a silver lining, at least for bar owners here in Hoboken. Uh, what I wanted to do on this episode was to quickly look back at the last five years. Here on Friday, I celebrated five years since the strikeout I had against Mike Trout, which I have made my claim to fame on. And it only the 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 story only grows uh, uh, throughout the time here. We've had several people reach out and wishing me a happy anniversary, completely unsolicited. I didn't ask anyone to do so. So um, it's been fun, though. So what I wanted to do was kind of look back at the last five years of where I was when I threw that pitch uh, this night five years ago and where I'm at now and how different my life can be and how different my life is uh, and shockingly, you know, never saw something like this uh, uh, turning out in my life. I, I, I thought many different things. And like I said, I'll go over through this, this short episode here. Uh, but back in 2016, you guys all know it. I got the infamous call to the bullpen to hurry up for the next batter. And that next batter was Michael Trout. Uh, I would then go on into that inning and hit that hit Mike Trout, give up a basis clear and double to Albert Pujols. Uh, and yeah, who man knows how many more runs, but I would later come out and, you know, get out of that inning to the standing ovation, which is now my profile picture and almost everything that I do, because it is a really, really cool picture. Uh, as long as you don't know the background of it is, is the most sarcastic standing ovation of all time. I later go on the next inning. I can't believe I go back out there, but I go out there and I face Mike again. And this time I strike him out on a very borderline fastball away. However, uh, you'll never hear me admit that on social media. I think that is an obvious strike in any other case. Uh, but after that gets sent down to Pawtucket, you guys know the rest. But I would later get traded to Minnesota. And, and like I, I'm not going to go through in depth all these places. But you guys know I went to Minnesota. I remember thinking that I would stick in Minnesota. I thought that was a good fit for me. It was a young team, a team that was struggling to kind of grow um, and, and kind of rebuild. I, th I think that in 2016, they were the worst team in baseball. So it was a good opportunity for me to kind of get my feet under me uh, at the big league level. And then I got a surprise trade um, uh, next spring training to Pittsburgh. Uh, and then me and Pittsburgh didn't get along, ended up to Seattle. And then me and Seattle didn't get along, plus I sucked. Um, and then released and, and moved on with my life. I remember I, I did, like I told you guys in, in years, in episodes past, that I did for about I'd say six months, try to figure it out. Um, it just never kind of panned out for me. It just, it just never was there. Uh, I couldn't quite figure out how to ever throw strikes again. Uh, it was unfortunate, uh, but it just kind of got out of my head again. It, it sucked. So uh, I ended up wanting to move on from baseball. Little did I know, just two mo short months later, I'd be asked to buy into my first ever restaurant. Um, it was a sushi restaurant. I... I I had, I had never even had sushi before, although I knew my brother really liked it. I knew a lot of other people really liked it. So I, I was like, sure, let's do it. It was a small percentage uh, and just wanted to get my feet wet, see what it's like. I ended up working there for about free for about four months. Um, and then from there, uh, I, I needed more. You know, I got my feet wet. I got a taste of the business, and I wanted more. I, I liked the investment. I liked. I learned a lot about it, and a lot about the industry, and exactly what it was like to kind of get in there. And I've talked to you guys about the, the business strategy I have now. This is kind of where it started. Um, you to talk about that ninety percent failure rate. It seems to me as though the restaurant industry has such a high failure rate because it attracts the most amateur investors. Uh, people think that they can just start a restaurant, they can just start a pizza shop, they can just start a bar. And it's just so not true in any capacity. Um, but if you get into it with people you know, or the people that know the industry, trusting, trustworthy people, um, you can make a lot of money. There are margins on here. You know, some of these places, 30, 35%, which you're not going to see very much, very much anywhere else in, in many other industries. Yeah, of course, you'll see stocks that return 500% in, in, a, in two months. Uh, but you know those are flyers. You don't really see them coming unless you have insider knowledge. You know 
as far as a sound investment that you work for, it's not just a roll of the dice. The restaurant industry is a good one to be in. Uh, it, it, you got to do your work. You got to do your homework. But it can be a really lucrative business to, to do some work in, and you can make a ton of money in it. Um, so I would later go on to buy Green Rock, uh, which has been a phenomenal investment uh, in just two short years. Um, and, and in one of those years being a pandemic. So, you know, that has been has turned a great profit for me and a good uh, something that I think I'd hi- like to hold for the next 20 years or so, 30 years, even or even until I die. You know, that business has been so good and it's been able to be a stepping stone for me into other places. And here I am buying my third in McSwiggins here on First Street in Hoboken. So, you know, another staple. You know, I've been able to turn that that fire, that drive I had, that that fateful day in July against Mike Trout and, and turn it into a, a restaurant. Um, now I'm definitely not a connoisseur yet, as me and my brother use that word so frivolously. Uh, I'm, I'm just a guy who likes to invest in restaurants at this point, right? It's the best I could probably do. But to think five years, five short years ago, I'm standing on the mound at Fenway Park pitching against arguably the greatest player of all time, Pro- definitely the greatest player of our generation thus far. And five years later, I'm, I've bought my third restaurant, third bar restaurant, whatever you want to call it, uh, and looking to do more after a pandemic. It's crazy how life can change so fast. I heard Gary V. I've heard a lot of big time people say people will overestimate what they can do in a year and underestimate what they can do in 10 years. And it's really true. You just don't know where life's going to take you. And you get that motivation, that, that quick burst of motivation of two, three months of I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really push on sh- social media, for example. I'm gonna really push on social media. I'm going to post all the time. I'm going to be all over it. I'm going to be an interactive, engaged, all those good things. And I'm going to grow my, my following from you know, you know, 1,000 people to 10,000 in three months. It just doesn't work like that. You know, it, it, for someone who just hit 30,000 followers, myself on Instagram, you, know, you get bursts. Like I have consistent, I stay engaged, I hang out with people, I talk to people, I'm very engaged on social media. And it grows, it grows steadily, steadily, steadily. And then you have, a, then you, have a, you know, something hit that really resonates and you get a thousand new followers in, in, in a day or two. So, but it, that's over time. You know, you, you, like you said, like, you know, a lot of times I'll look back, if I just stuck with something I was doing six years ago, right now I'd be in such a good position if I just kept doing it. But you have those quick bursts of energy and you give up because that quick burst of energy runs out. You got to be consistent. You got to be, uh, again, you have to have long-term goals. Uh, sh- short-term, goals make, sh- short-term goals make sense. But they have to be in a, in a place that is attainable and doesn't make it burn out so fast. Uh, because if you want 10 million followers in the next three months, you know, you're probably going to burn out because you're just not going to see that return unless you're just putting out baller content for the next three months. Um, a person, someone like in my shoes, I'm still figuring out what content works, what content people like to see. You know, I'm not a, you know, you know, for lack of a better word, you know, David Dobrik, who, who really found out. I know he had some scandals recently, but found out what his his people like. You know, Gary V knows what his people like. Tony Robbins knows what his people like. Like, I don't have that. I know I put out baseball content, but some hits really well, some hits don't. I put a TikTok on Thursday, and I thought, this is going to fucking kill. I'm making fun of the Yankees, which always kills. I got a little socks in there. It's a, it's a trend on TikTok. This is going to do great. Did well on, t- on Instagram Reels. Didn't do so well on TikTok. So it's, you just never know what's going to happen. Uh, but that, 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 that saying that you underestimate what you can do in 10 years and overestimate what you can do in one year, it really is powerful to me because I look at these five years of my life. You know, I woke up yesterday. Actually, I was going to bed yesterday. And I was someone had um, a Barcel Big Cat. Uh, if you follow him, uh, he had mentioned didn't, didn't I strike out Mike Trout? And I was like, yeah. And I was, you know, I make I make my jokes with him, and then I'm I'm sitting there. And I'm like, wait, it's July first. Tomorrow's the second. I think the second is when I struck out Trout. So I look at it, and then I do the math. It's been five years. And I'm like, oh shit. And you start thinking, especially to realize that right before you go to bed. Everyone knows before you go to bed, you are thinking about anything and everything. And so 
you know, I'm laying there and I'm like, you know, geez, I was on the mound pitching against Mike Trout five years later. I own three restaurants trying to buy, you know, you know, 10 more, you know, in such a different world, you know, being, you know, now, now doing the business thing and learning the business thing to try to be successful there. It's crazy how life can change so quickly on you. I mean, if you don't, you don't believe me, ask Trevor Bauer. I mean, the guy was a guy that, you know, he's a night, a villain that everyone kind of liked to hate. And now he's got these allegations against him. You know, some, it's hard to see, you know, I'm trying to filter through all the noise and see what we really have here. I mean, he definitely did something to this girl, whether she wanted it or not. It, it's hard to kind of grasp. It seems, oh, it seems excessive, uh, but I won't get my opinion on that. But I mean, think about how quickly life changes for you there. You know, he's looked at as, as an idol in, in L.A. He's looked at as a guy who's pitched really well in baseball, um, done really well for himself, did a great three-year deal. And now all of a sudden he's in a very different place. Um, you know, just got administrative leave from Major League Baseball, which is not a penalty by any means. So it's paid and all that. They just want to see the want to step have him step away for the time being. But it's really crazy to see what's going on right now, uh, and, and see how life changes so quickly. Um, and it's it's listen, it's fun. I tell you right now, I'm I'm very happy with how I've taken my my post baseball career. I'm having a ton of fun, as you guys can hear on on, on all of my episodes. Uh, but it's it's really really something. Uh, to take a, a look back and take a look in the rearview mirror and see just where these last five years have gone uh, and how different. I mean, I thought I'd still be pitching for the Twins at this point, you know, making good money just out of, you know, in arbitration, uh, making some solid money. And I thought I'd stick there. Just never worked out for me. And then the spiral went down after Pittsburgh. So it, it's, it's, you just don't know. You really just don't know. And I continue to take that with me in the business world. You really don't know where you'll be. I thought I was going to do one investment a week ago. This week, I'm out on that investment and into another one. You just don't know. So with that said, guys, I hope you had a great July 4th weekend. I'm a very patriotic man myself. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's always nice to celebrate. Remember, remember the reason we are celebrating. Uh, I won't lecture you on that like everyone else on social media. But uh, I hope you guys had a great weekend. I hope you had a little bit better weather uh, than uh, the tri-state area that, that we're having right now here. Uh, but... Hope you had a great weekend. I hope you have a great week. Until next time, guys, I'll see you at the bar. Thank you so much for listening to the Sorry We're Closed podcast. Go subscribe to our email chain over at thepatlight.com and follow us on all social media. Until next time, guys, I'll see you at the bar. Sorry, we're closed.